you mentioned testing earlier. Is, is there a conclusive way we can tell that, yes, this is the problem that I have, I do have ad adrenal fatigue? Well, there's certainly better ways. And the unfortunate thing is the usual test that people do for uh, the adrenals, that medical doctors would do for the adrenals, is, is called an ACTH challenge test. And they gave a synthetic ACTH, which is, is a hormone secreted by the pituitary gland. And they see what happens to the adrenal glands. In their really test, that test is really designed to test for Addison's disease, the disease that destroys the adrenal gland. So in a test of that kind, we wouldn't see a rise of the cortisol. But people with adrenal fatigue don't have an eaten away adrenal gland. They can still function. So when they give them that ACTH test, they still pass it. But that doesn't mean they don't have some sort of adrenal dysfunction. Mm -hmm. It means it's not a structural, non-reactive function. The best test is the test of salivary hormones. That's a very interesting, it's well established, over 3,000 articles about how to do salivary hormone testing and the scientific validity of it. And they simply take a saliva sample and that tests the free cortisol and DHEAS, another hormone secreted by the adrenal glands. And you can also test the other steroid hormones too, testosterone and estrogen, uh, at the same time you're doing that. So you can take a simple saliva test, and my suggestion is they take it during the, the day, about four times. Uh, when they wake up, about 45 minutes after they wake up, about noon, about four o'clock in the afternoon, and then before they go to bed at night. And there are about a dozen labs that do this uh, in the United States. And so they can simply do this and find out if indeed their cortisol is having the typical fluctuations because typically cortisol is highest in the morning about 45 minutes after you wake up, then it goes through its low in the afternoon, then it comes back a little bit and slowly teeters down to uh, be just a little bit uh, uh, above lowest at it when you go to bed at night and it stays pretty low until about 4.30 or 5 in the morning when it starts going up. So we see this the diurnal pattern, we call it, and we know how to interpret this. Now, laboratories are used to interpreting tests. They do thousands of them. The laboratory uh, that I'm most familiar with has done over a million of these tests. So they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, they'll be glad to talk this over with a person or with a doctor that orders the test, too, so they can not only have the test, they can have it interpreted, too, and they can know whether or not it's, it's, it's a, a problem. And then, of course, there's a questionnaire in the book uh, that they can take, too, and it, it's a questionnaire I used in my office for over 20 years, and that'll give them a really strong indication. And then they can follow that questionnaire usually corresponds with the levels of cortisol as they see it in a lab test as well. Mm -hmm. You can also do a 24-hour urinary cortisol and a catch cort uh, urinary cortisol, but the most accurate one I found and the most helpful clinically is the salivary hormone test.